Hi everybody, it's Waynell. Welcome to this week's Sunday School Highlight video. Now, I don't know where you are in the country or in the world, but it's been an interesting week here in Dallas, Texas. We woke up yesterday morning and looked outside and we were like, what? It was like six inches of snow on the ground. Snow day. Uh, but about eight hours later, we were like, what? The sun had come and melted it all away. So today, we're back to work and back to school. And as a matter of fact, so many are preparing to go on spring break. So if you're one of those folks, enjoy yourselves, refuel, recharge, and come back ready to finish your semester strong. Okay, so this video comes to you each week for three reasons. Number one, to encourage you to make Sunday school a part of your regular weekend routine. Secondly, when you show up, don't just show up because I ask you to. Don't just be a warm body in a chair and don't know the lesson title. Don't know where the lesson is found. Haven't read anything, making it all hard on the teacher. But let's be prepared students who are excited about discussing God's word. Lastly, that we will cause God's word to become alive in our everyday lives. Not just stories that we read on paper, but thinking about how we live it out in the places that we live, work, and serve. Okay. I already know that I have a hard ask of you this week. I know that it's hard. I asked on Facebook, why don't people like to go to Sunday school? And I got so many responses. And of course, the most popular was because it's the only day I get to sleep in. What? One hour is sleeping in for you? Oh, please, no. If I'm going to sleep in, please give me like three hours to sleep in. And then I'm going to need some pancakes when I get done sleeping in. But not one hour. Not just one hour. But this week is also daylight savings time, so I know it's not exactly one hour that I'm asking you for because, well, the other hour is not my fault. You got to set your clock ahead on Saturday night. You're going to lose an hour. Let's just be honest about it. You're losing an hour this week. That's not my fault. But the ground is waking up. The birds are waking up. Things are blooming. It's time to spring forward. And guess what? I need you to spring on into Sunday school. So set your clocks ahead. Be there. You know what? The truth is I'm really just trying to help you out. How do I know I'm trying to help you out? Think about it this way. If by chance, for any reason, you don't hear your alarm or you don't set your clock forward and you wake up at your regular time and you think you're bebopping in for praise and worship, it's going to be offering time. I'm trying to help you. At least if for any reason you miss Sunday school, you'll still be there on time for worship. See, I'm trying to help you. So be there. Can you tarry with me for just one hour? Yes, we're going to spring ahead. Yes, we're still going to spend that hour in Sunday school. So thank you so much for making it a part of your plans. This week, our lesson comes again from the book of St. John. I told you before that we are in a new quarter and that the first four lessons would be from St. John and the fifth would come from Mark. And the title this uh, quarter is The Spirit Comes. And so last week I talked a little bit about the purpose of the Holy Spirit in our lives and you'll continue to hear some of those same threads, uh, not because I don't have anything else to say, but it's what we're studying, the purpose of the Spirit of God in our lives. And we know that the Spirit of God comes not so that we have uh, off the chain worship services and that we dance and that we shout, but that even when we get done doing all of that that we can live lives that are empowered, that we live lives of service, and that we always know that the Spirit is making intercession for us, that He is praying for us. So that's really what we'll continue to study this week. Our lesson, if you use the standard lesson commentary, is Another Advocate. If you use Power for Living, your lesson title is Jesus Promises an Advocate. Before I read, you know the disclaimer, this is not an official video of the Church of God in Christ. God bless you, Bishop Alton Gatlin and Mother Cleolia Penix. Read! The Bible basis is from St. John chapter 14 verses 15 through 26. The Bible truth. Jesus says that he would send the Holy Spirit to help his followers to love God and to live according to God's commandments. Memory verse is verse 26. And the lesson aim is that we will understand the significance of the Holy Spirit, recognize the power available through the Holy Spirit, and pray for the guidance of the Holy Spirit in making decisions. And so because we're studying again from the book of John, let's just be refreshed that John is considered a gospel. It is not a synoptic gospel. That's Matthew, Mark, and Luke. John is a little bit different writer than the others in that he tends to write with a little more detail. So example, yeah, he talks about the fish and loaves, but it's in John that we find out that they were barley loaves. So that's a detail that we don't see in other, other gospels. Um, he also cites sounds, uh, smells. He's very sensory in his writing. 
It's in John that we don't just see what Jesus does, but we see the humanity of Jesus, that he was all God, yet he was all man. So as he was all man, he got hungry. He got thirsty. When his friend died, he was sad. So he cried. You know he cried. That's why you pray when you finish, your, before you eat your food, you pray, Jesus wept. You got to at least know where it's found, right? Okay, so it's in John that Jesus wept. And really John was writing so that readers would know that he was indeed, he was reflecting that he is indeed the Messiah. He records only seven miracles, which he refers to as signs in his writing, as opposed to the others who record several more. So um, this week we're talking about another advocate, an advocate being um, someone who speaks publicly on behalf of someone or for a cause. Uh, another definition of an advocate is an intercessor. And so in this lesson this week, and you'll take some time and read it, just know that the setting is in the upper room. Go back to like chapter 13 and read up to this point. So a lot has happened. And this message is, uh, this conversation with Jesus is very mm, transitional in nature. And so when I read things like this, I always think about like last conversations with people or last interactions and what are the messages that they're giving and what are the, what do they want you to take away and what will you remember about being with this person? So Jesus at this point has spent like almost three years with a handpicked group of people, his disciples. Now, what's always fascinating to me is we read about all these things that Jesus did, but a lot of this again happened in just a three year period of time. And these men have been around him and soaking up everything that they can. And here he is starting to talk about a time when he would no longer be with them. And I would imagine that that had to have been a hard thing to hear. And not only hard mentally to process it all, but the emotions that went along with that to be very sad. If we think about someone who is dying, to think about how that transition looks and how we spend those last times. You know, there's some emotion wrapped up in that, even when you're doing fun things. So I think about my father before he passed away. One of the things he wanted to do was make memories with the children. Now, I don't think he knew he was about to die. It wasn't like he didn't have cancer or anything like that. But he knew that one day, Grandpa may not be there. And so he started to do things like have Valentine's Day fellowships. We don't party, saints. But Valentine's Day parties, or he would get breakfast for them when they came over. You know, And maybe those little McDonald's pancakes didn't seem like anything to anybody else. But for him, it was making memories that even now they remember. So here is Jesus in one of those times where he is connecting with people in a way that they will remember. He says at the beginning, that's not in our printed text, in the beginning of chapter 14, he's telling them, let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. And yeah, mansions, and yeah I've got to go, but when I go, I'm going to prepare a place for you because I'm going to see you again and I'm going to receive you. And you know, you don't, you don't prepare for somebody if you don't really believe that they're coming. So Jesus was explaining to them that this is not the end we would be together again. And some of the disciples had questions, you know, and Jesus went on to tell them, if you've been with me, you know who I am and you know who my father is. But it was Philip who had the question, well, how, how do we really know? And Jesus kind of rebuked him and he was like, you've been with me all this time and you still don't know who I am. And I think a lot of us can be guilty of that too. We spend a lot of time doing a lot of things, but it's possible to do all those things and still not know who Jesus is. But that really takes us up to the lesson. So verse 14 is not printed text, but it's familiar scripture to us. He says that those who believe in me um, and believe in my works, you're going to do greater works than this. And then he segues into our printed text and he says that if you love me, you keep my commandments. And that for me was a very powerful, powerful piece of scripture. There's my blooper again. Uh, because love is an action word and it's not just the actions of the things that we do physically love is not just because I show up at church every Sunday love isn't my t-shirt the love of God isn't my bumper sticker but I demonstrate that I love God when I keep his commandments talking to a friend of mine this week we were talking about how the world has just become this place where people just do what they want to do and we do it without thought or parameters, but the fact that there are commandments means that there is somewhere a set of guidelines that talk about how we are to live our lives. And the only way that we show our love for Jesus Christ is that we keep those commandments. Not that we turn up and do everything that we want to do, but that we've exchanged our will for his and an obedience to keep his commandments. And in return for that, he goes on to say that 
God then gives proof of his love back to us. And that's what this lesson is really about. It's the proof of God's love for us in that he wouldn't just leave and leave these people out there and leave them uncovered. But the promise that God would send his spirit, and that is the advocate that is referred to in verse 16, that God would send his advocate, a comforter who would help us. And not only an advocate, but he's identified as a he. The Holy Spirit is a person. He's not an it. You cannot catch it. If you catch it, you may throw it back. You can't catch it, but you receive him into your heart. He's a gift that's available to all of us. God wants us to have his spirit subsequent to salvation. When we receive Christ into our hearts, we become candidates for his spirit to live in us. And continue to read because you'll see about the importance of why you need that comforted with you. What is it about you? There are things in our flesh left to our own. We don't wake up every day inherently good. We just don't. Something happened this week, and if you think about how you woulda, coulda, shoulda, maybe used to respond, it's the Spirit of God that keeps us from acting in ways that don't please our God. Um, continue reading. Um, I can't tell it all. I'm not even the teacher. I'm a student. Uh, but the Spirit is truth, uh, and he goes on to promise that I'm not leaving you like orphans. God wouldn't do that. He loves us too much to leave us as orphans. Uh you see also that another question comes because, again, to take in all this information, some of the disciples were kind of looking, hashtag side eye, what does this mean? And it was Judas, not Judas Iscariot. He was already gone because whatever he had to do, he had to do it quickly. Go so you can get ready to betray me. He was already gone. But the other man named Judas asked the question, why is it that we would know and not the world? And so there are questions and it's okay sometimes that we have questions and God wants us even to come to him in the right way with our questions. Jesus replies to him a third time. So we see repetition in scripture. Whenever there's repetition, we should be getting the message that the only way to show our love for him is by keeping his commandment. Here was one of my favorite pieces as well. And this is where I'll ask for your comments this week if you have any. It's around verse 26, and it says, uh, The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything that I've said unto you. And I have an NIV translation. In other words, I think the King James says that he'll bring it back to your remembrance. But in order to bring something back to your remembrance, you've got to put something in to be remembered. So we should be in our words, spending time with God each day so that there is something that we have to draw on. Here's the question. If you're going to leave a comment this week, would you leave us a comment with a scripture that you've been able to remember or draw on during difficult times that has brought strength or comfort to you? Again, list a scripture that you have been able to draw on that has been strength or comfort for you. That's enough for the Sunday School Student Review of the Week. Tomorrow night, do not miss the lesson review with the Illinois First Jurisdiction on the Saturday night Sunday School Hotline. The phone number is 605-475-3235. The access code is 170045-POUND. I think I gave it a new name. I don't think it's a hotline, but you know what I mean. Dial in because you don't want to teach this lesson. You don't want to sit in on this lesson if you have not participated on the call. Superintendent Michael Payton is excited to have us on. And even if you can't make it at 9 o'clock Central tomorrow night, as soon as the last caller disconnects from the call, the replay becomes available. So listen to it tomorrow night or if you have to listen on your way in to Sunday School Sunday morning. That's all for now. Have an exceptional weekend, and I'll see you guys next week. Meet me in Sunday school where Sunday morning worship begins. Bye.